stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on the great QD OLED TVs of this year? Whether it's the Samsung S95B or the Sony A95K Master Series, these are next generation TVs, but you really don't know what the differences are. More color volume. What is it really? What is color volume? What is this wider color gamut? 80%, 85%, 70%. We are going to answer all of that today because we have a new benchmarking tool from the team at Spears and Munsell. Thank you so much, Stacey Spears, for sharing with me this pre-production version. We will use it to illustrate how improved color volume, wide color gamut, and peak luminance elevates the QD OLED over prior OLED technologies. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, WhoKeys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build, you have the best of the best, and sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu at the bottom, select update and security select activation then select change product key paste what you copied from who keys click next click activate and you're done you can download the windows 10 pro key and you're up and running but that's not all folks who keys has keys for games too steam origin you play you name it you got it check out their sites there are discounts for all sorts of stuff and most importantly you want to be productive what about office suite yep you can download a copy of office professional with my code sf20 at checkout and bam now before we jump into the comparisons let's talk about the tvs themselves first 2021 king of tvs sony a90j love that tv it really brought out HDR specular highlights better than I've seen in any other TV. But then suddenly we have the introduction of the first QD OLED TV, the Samsung S95B. I really love that TV. I've been claiming, oh wow, it has color volume. It goes brighter, all these things. But I didn't have real content to indicate where it's really brighter. Where is the color volume differences? Now, before we get into that comparison, both TVs are matched to be as similar as possible. The Sony A90J was calibrated and it's set to custom mode, brightness on high, peak luminance on high, no enhancements on, set to gradation preferred. On the Samsung S95B, movie mode, peak brightness on high, max brightness, and both are in the BT2020 color space. And most importantly, they are very similar, but you won't see the color similarities because OLED pushes blue on camera. So we won't talk about color differences. We're gonna talk about luminance and even the, and just the presence of color, right? Not, is that the right color, but is it white or is there color at all? And that's enough for this discussion. So if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below, but let's jump into the comparisons really quick. I'm gonna walk you through this amazing disc that Spears and Muscle will be releasing later this summer. So let's check it out real quick. And boom. Okay, so this is the new Spears and Muscle content. Let's go through the various readouts for you guys really quick. All right, it's paused right there. On the very top box, you will see a reading of nits. We're talking about peak luminance for that scene. Uh, the waveform below the white lines is where the TV is currently showing, right? And below that is your color space. The inside triangle is Rec 709. And then the next triangle outside of that is DCI-P3. And then the largest triangle is BT-2020. And that weird loop that covers everything is your visual perception. This is what you're able to see. And so the colors you see within these triangles are the colors that are being shown. Various combinations, when you put it together, becomes purple, violet, or whatnot. And the intensity is reflected by the brightness of the color. So it'll help you understand better, oh, this color is within the Rec 709 triangle, the smallest triangle, or oh no, it's beyond Rec 709 into DCI-P3, which is what most movies are graded in today, or it goes beyond DCI-P3 into BT-2020, which is what this Spears and Muscle content is graded in, but not all content goes into 
BT2020 or REC2020, right? And in the bottom box is the source signal of the image you're seeing. But what you see is it's monochromatic except for certain areas that are red. That red area is the wide color gamut area. Where there is supposed to be white color gamut, you'll see red. The higher the intensity of red, the greater the presence of that color in the wider color gamut, either DCI-P3 or BT-2020. The lighter the red, the closer it is to Rec. 709. And if there's no red at all, it's all within the Rec. 709 triangle. Genius, right? So let's go through this first scene and we'll, we'll talk about it. So this is the opening scene of the Spears and Muscle disc. And what you see is as it gets brighter and brighter, right? The waveform on the top box, it goes up. Now the very top line is 10,000 nits. Next line is 4,000 nits. Then this one is 1,000 nits. And right here, if I pause, is 350 nits. The reason that's important is this. Modern OLED TVs today can fully render their entire color volume within 350 nits. So when you hear, well, you know, my OLED is limited to, let's say, I don't know, 65%, right? of BT-2020. Well, it can hit all 65% of BT-2020 at 350 nits for sure. But as you get brighter and brighter, that begins to disappear. The brighter the TV, the older TV gets, the less percentage of that color volume they can hit because the brightness dilutes the color. And the reason the 350 nits is important is this. At 350 nits, if you are missing color, it's simply because the TV cannot hit that color specifically, right? So what this means is at 350 nits, if the OLED does not have color that it should have, it simply means that the OLED cannot render that color. That color is not within the OLED's color space. Not that it cannot get bright enough. Getting brighter doesn't help matters. 350 nits is not that bright. It simply means that the TV cannot get that color no matter what the brightness is. And above 350 nits, most OLED TVs will begin to lose color. And so knowing that when you look at the color space below and the brightness of the image, we can start analyzing what we should be seeing or what the creator thinks we should see based on his reference monitor. And of course, below the very bottom image in black and white is where the location of the wider color gamut is supposed to be. And then we look at the two TVs on the left, top TV is the Sony A90J receiving the same signal as the Samsung S95B. So let's get into the next scene and we'll walk ourselves through this. This is a great scene, so I'm gonna pause real quick right here. All right, in this scene, there is definitely color in the brightest part of the scene. So we know where the brightest part. If you look at the waveform, right, the widest part of the scene is to the right. And look at the color though, the color is still within Rec. 709. Both TVs should be able to render all the colors. So none of these colors fall outside of the Sony A90J. However, when you get too bright, you lose color. And that's where color volume comes in. The Sony A90J, look at how bright this part of the scene where the sunshine is, right? It's clearly above a thousand nits. Well, the Sony A90J and no other OLED is going to hold on to all that yellow as it gets brighter and brighter, the parts of that yellow that are below 400 nits, it's holding on to. But as you get up, up beyond 400 nits and getting closer to 1,000, the S95B is better able to hold on to the color. So this is not an example of, oh, the S95B has a wider color gamut. See, I see more orange in this scene. No, it has better color volume. Same colors, both TVs can render the same color if it was below 350 nits, this would look identical actually, but because there are parts of the scene that are above 500 nits, getting closer to 1000 nits, those parts of the scene cannot be rendered on the Sony A90J with color. Okay, let's move on to this next scene. This is another great scene because look at the color space. It's solidly within Rec. 709, right? Again, not an example of wide color gamut, but an example of color volume, because if you look at the Sony and the Samsung, two things are happening. First, because the Samsung can get brighter, there is more detail in the clouds, right? There's no clipping. Second, there is a little bit more color in the Samsung. There's a bit more grays. 
there's a bit more yellows because now we're talking color volume. So here you have a clipping problem on the Sony. It can't render the details because there's too much to tone map. And you have a color volume problem with the Sony. It cannot hold on to that color at that brightness. And if you look at the luminance chart on the very top right hand corner, right? The waveform, look how high it goes, 4,000 nits. Of course, the Sony will be unable to render all of that, tone map that down, because going from 4,000 nits to 700 nits or 800 nits, there's a lot farther to go than the Samsung who takes 4,000 nits and maybe brings it down to 1,500 or 1,200 nits, right? That is a big difference. Oh, look at me. I just appeared in a box on the bottom. I didn't know this button was there. Okay, so let's go into the next scene. Oh, I love this scene. I'm gonna take myself out of the box real quick because it's important you see all of this. Okay, let's get the scroll back in and boom, there we go, right here. What you see here is three things actually. First, if you look at the brightness levels, look at the waveform top right hand corner, this scene isn't super bright. So we're not worried about clipping or we're not worried about well, we might be worried about a little bit about color volume, but let's talk about no clipping first. Then you go to the second box below, right? What color gamut is here? And you notice the red extends beyond the basic color gamut. Where do you see red in the bottom picture? You see red with some of the flowers, right? This bright red. And I'm referring to the bottom right-hand corner <laughs> where you see the image showing red in a few parts, right? You got the violets, the purple or magenta uh, flowers, and then you have some wide color gamut in the greens. Well, what does this mean? It means that in the scene, the A90J and the Samsung, the Samsung renders the green a bit more vibrant because there's more green that they can render, and the magenta flowers appear to pop a little bit more because it's rendering more of that color gamut in the flowers. There's more color in the flowers. And of course, the squirrel looks a bit brighter <laughs> because there's more color volume. So with the with a better color volume and all the grays, it looks like the squirrel actually has a bit better contrast because there's more color on the squirrel. The whole scene is a little bit brighter because this S95B can also render average picture levels higher because look at this entire scene. Look at the waveform uh, on the top chart, right? This entire scene is actually pretty bright and the details on top of that brightness is rendered better on the S95B because QD OLED can do that. It gives you the brighter scene, the higher APLs, and when you have specular highlights that are also bright on top of that, this is the scene that makes QD OLED shine. Now, not all scenes are like this, but I love this scene because it has a little bit of everything. Now in this next scene, I'll just reappear here real quick because, well, there's nothing down there, so I can talk to you guys, right? Okay, this is a great scene. This will demonstrate color volume, a little bit of color gamut, but mostly color volume, because you can see on the very bottom image on the right, right, you got three charts, you see how you have extended wide color gamut slowly disappearing, but in this image, it's irrelevant because it's so dark, you're not gonna see it anyway, right? What you do see is what happens next. See that color gamut? the extended gamut starts to disappear, disappear, and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And as it gets brighter, what is happening with the Sony? It's starting to lose some of that color. The yellow becomes a little bit more diluted, washed out even, right? So I'll pause right here. What do you see? Most of the color is in the Rec. 709 color space. I know the Sony can handle all these colors, but because it's gotten really bright now, what happens is the Sony loses some of the color that it could normally handle at under 400 nits, but now at 1,000 nits, not so much. What you see here is the perfect example of the importance of wide color gamut. What you see in this scene is, first, it's not super bright. You see the luminous on this, right? You're not breaking 1,000 nits, and definitely within the color volume capabilities of both TVs, on the top of the waveform, you know it's not super bright. As a matter of fact, it's within the brightness capabilities of the Sony A90J. So the Sony A90J is able to put out all of its best colors at this luminance level. But look, it's still missing something. What is it missing? What you see is there is 
blue extending way into that white color space, right? And so you see the difference between the Sony and the Samsung. The Sony doesn't have those blues. The bottom, the Samsung, because it's able to show that blue, we're not talking about brightness anymore. We're just talking about the ability to show this blue on this TV, even when it's not bright. And this last scene is for all you Sony fans out there. Why? Because the two look nearly identical, if not identical. I cannot really tell the difference. And this is what I see most of the time. Both the S95B and the Sony A90J are phenomenal TVs. The A90J, it was the king of TV for 2021. I doubt it will hold on to the crown in 2022, but this is why. In most scenes, the Sony A90J looks identical to the S95B. But what does all of this mean for real movie content? Check it out, the shallows. In the scenes where it's moonlit and shining on her face on the Sony A90J, it looks great until I see it on the S95B. I'm like, well, wait, there's some skin tone I'm missing. And that's it. I love the S95B because I'm getting that skin tone. I don't get it from the A90J. And we'll see if the G2 has more skin tone than A90J because it's supposed to have more color volume. Doesn't mean it has a wider color gamut though. That's another thing. How much of the skin tone came from the color gamut? How much of it is because the color volume is limited because I don't have the waveforms and the color gamut chart in this movie? I can't tell you. I could only speculate. I do believe it's a combination of better color volume on the S95B with that touch of extra gamut, it gives you this slightly richer look in her face. So let me know what you guys think. Is skin tone important to you enough to upgrade your TV to get a QD OLED, whether the S95B or the A95K? We'll get that in soon and we'll compare it. But I suspect similar differences or improvements to the A95K as well. I do have the G2, it just came in today. So I'll definitely be comparing the S95B to the G2 to the A90J this coming weekend. But are those differences important to you? Or maybe it's like sports cars, right? When you're paying $3,000, you want every inch of performance, even though you may not be using it. What do you think? Will you be using that performance? Until next time, stop the FOMO.